Uh, good evening. Welcome to the last Sunday of 2018. And you've made it through Christmas. You've made it through Boxing Day, or at least you're, you're here, so that's, that's good enough for me. You're only about 28 hours and 25, 4, 3, 2, 1... 25 minutes uh, away from, from uh, the new year. And some of you are looking back at this year and thinking, best year ever. Uh, maybe one of you. And then, and then uh, some of the rest of you are like, oh, I'm so glad that this year is basically over with. This is, it's so great to be done with this year. Most of us are somewhere in between. But whether you had a great year or a challenging year, um, yeah, it doesn't always reflect about how you're, you're feeling at this, at this time. I, I find myself this year uh, rather worn out, a little bit worn out by uh, approaching the end of the year. Uh, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one that's feeling a bit weary, uh, a bit worn out. And I, I know that um, many of you, no matter how challenging your year was or how, or how uh, wonderful it was, you, you still might be feeling a bit weary, a bit weary or maybe even a bit self-disappointed. Disappointed as you look back at this year. I'm a bit self-disappointed as I look back at this, this autumn, a little bit disappointed in, in how I navigated it on the inside. I carried more uh, stress. I carried more anxiety this autumn than I, than I needed to carry. And as a result, my blood pressure went up and my happiness went down and people around me's happiness went down. And you, you know how that goes a little bit. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I, I, let, I let the pressures become stress and anxiety. So I have three resolutions, personal resolutions, as I turn into 2019 here. Uh, Self-assessment aims flowing out of my weariness and, and, and just kind of looking back over the last season. My first, self, my first aim for myself is I want my soul to be more alive with, with God in the next three months in comparison to the last three months. I'm not saying I've been disconnected from God, but I just want more more connection over the next couple of months. And I, and I think that there's probably other people who are here and who are thinking to themselves, yeah, you know what? I think I could, I would rather, I would, I like the idea of having my soul feel more connected with God in the next, in the next season compared to the last season. That's my, the first aim. My second aim is this. Secondly, I want to live with less anxiety and stress. I'm going to live with less anxiety and stress. Now, I'm going to have lots of pressure. I'm not going to be able to run away from the pressure and the decision makings and all the, and all the things that, that are going on. We are in the process of, a, of amazing answered prayer. And, and coming along with that is, is change and, and transition and navigating all the decisions that are needed for that, I'm not running away with that. I'm going to have, there's going to be pressures, but I do not need to take my pressures and make, turn them into stress and anxiety. I want to, uh, to live with less anxiety and stress. Maybe I'm not the only one who looks ahead and thinking, you know what, this, this year had maybe looks challenging, but I would prefer not to face it with stress and anxiety as well. Uh, maybe that's you as well. Thirdly, I want to live confident and confirmed that what I'm doing with my time and energy at work, at home, and in all my life is exactly what Jesus wants me to be doing. I don't mind working hard. I don't mind working hard at all. But I just want to make sure that I'm working hard at what Jesus wants me to work, be working hard at and not working hard at things that are just wasting my, my, my energy, wasting my time. So those are my three aims going into 2019. And I don't know exactly what you would say your aims might be. Some of you might look at those aims and be like, yeah, I, I kind of like some of those as well. But if you're looking back like, like I am, and you're feeling a bit weary or maybe a bit self-disappointed, disappointed in how you've navigated this last season, I want to end this year with a message of encouragement. If you find yourself weary, self-disappointed, I want to end this year with a message of encouragement, uh, specifically an, an encouragement to the weary uh, and encouragement to, to the self disappointment. There's probably four reasons, one of four reasons, or, or, or a combination of these four reasons, why you might be ending this year weary or self disappointed. The first one, uh, you might look back and realize that you've wasted your year. Or secondly, you look back and that you see that you've been waylaid by your year. 
Or thirdly, you look back and see that you've been worn out by taking on too much. Or fourthly, you, you look back and see that your life pace has been without healthy rest. You might assess th- those, those things, probably a combination of some of those four. I'm just going to go through them briefly, and we're going to talk about these four things, these uh, four um, <laughs> enemies to, to peace, to enemies to, um, to weariness. Uh, first of all, let me, let's briefly talk about, uh, for those who look back and feel self-disappointed, who look back and think, oh, I've wasted my year. I've wasted my year. Now, maybe you feel like maybe you've wasted it by, by just being unmotivated or, or just, I'm just not quite going to bed ever and then I'm sleeping in and I'm just not quite, I, don't, I just can't be bothered to do this or, or that extra thing. Or maybe, maybe you feel like you've, you've wasted your year because of too much uh, screen time. Nobody watches TV anymore. Uh, but like if you watch, you know, watching too much YouTube or Netflix or or too much social media and mindless phone scrolling or too many video games if there is such a thing and you're you're thinking about you're thinking about your your, your year and you're like I just I kind of I disengaged I didn't I, I I just kind of wasted my year mindlessly distracting myself uh, getting through and so you might look at yourself and think oh, you know I'm a little bit disappointed I'm self-disappointed in, in, in that. Wasting your life in the Bible, uh, when Jesus talks about it it, it, it is kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, Jesus talks loads about not wasting our, our lives. And, and, and again, I'm going to talk about that for a second, but this is an encouragement message. <laughs> this is supposed to be an encouragement message. Kelly tells me uh, on Friday, make sure it's an encouraging message, so... Whatever comes out of my mouth, if she asks, it's just such an encouraging message. Okay, great. Um, so it is an encouraging me- a message, but it, in this moment of reflection, we, we might be, um, it might feel a little bit of darkness of self-disappointment. And, and so we're going to stare at a bit of our own lack of productivity for a second through the lens of the Bible. Matthew chapter 25. In Matthew chapter 25, there's three stories Parables or teachings in that story and they all are connected to this concept of being distracted or being lazy and it, and it not being Exactly what God was was looking for. In fact, that's the lightest possible way to say it in in, in chapter in chapter 25 of Matthew Jesus is telling these three stories. I, I, I don't have time to read all 46 verses, but uh, let me just remind you what the stories were the first one is a story of ten um Bridesmaids, ten bridesmaids, and in that parable, the the groom was going to show up, and five bridesmaids were ready. They had their they had their lamps ready, and they had oil in their lamps. Uh, the other five were not ready for whatever reason. They never got around to it. They they didn't. They were maybe they were distracted. They, they couldn't be bothered, or they just never got the oil for their lamps. And so when the when the groom shows up. Five were ready, and they go in to celebrate. Uh, five were not ready, and they were, they were rejected. At the end of that story, Jesus says in warning in Matthew chapter 25, verse 13, he says, in light of that, to the people, therefore, in light of that story, be alert, or be on it, or be ready, be, be engaged, because you don't know either the day or the hour. That's the first story that Jesus tells in that chapter. The second one is called the parable of the talents, which which isn't about like talent like, hey, I'm this amazing master eyebrow dancer or or something like that. I'm not, but, but that could be your talent. Not that kind of talent. It was a unit of money, a unit of money of about 17 years worth of wages for a common worker. So quite a bit of money is one talent, 17 uh, common worker years wages. Uh, So in that parable, the master gives five talents to one person, two talents to another, and one to a third, and each according to their ability. The one with five makes five more. The one with two makes two more. But the one with one... Uh, did nothing with it. They hid it. They did nothing. Did nothing with the talent that they'd been given, the 17 years worth of wages that they'd been given. They, they hid it, and, and they did nothing. 
And this is how that story went, went according to Jesus in Matthew 25, verse 24. It, Jesus comes to the end of that story and he says, then the man who had received one talent also approached the master because the master returned and, and gave rewards and, and people gave an account. The master, uh, then the man who had received one talent also approached and said, master, I know you. I know you. You're a difficult man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seeds. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. Look, you have what is yours. But his master replied to him, you evil, lazy slave. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers. And when I returned, I would have received my money back with interest. That's the second story. The third story also tied into this theme of of doing nothing or or, or what you do being important is about how God evaluates lives at the end of the day. They're separating the sheep from the goat and the goats. Uh, Sheeps and goats and goats and sheeps, yeah. And 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 how and then he he brings his Jesus brings the assessment on why why people were sorted the way that they were sorted and then there's a praise version of this assessment and then there's a, um, a rebuke version of this assessment and the praise version in Matthew twenty five thirty six uh, why some were accepted and some were rejected Jesus says for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat I was thirsty. And you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Shortly after that, the rebuke follows, and it's basically those who didn't do those things, who did nothing, who didn't do what Jesus was wanting them to do. They didn't care for the sick or clothe the naked or, or give water to the strangers, or, or th- those who didn't do what God wanted them to do. Now, we're talking about those who look back and feel like they've wasted this year. And this is an encouragement message. And you're thinking, Brian, this is not so far super encouraging. Uh, I could think of better, more encouraging pastor, uh, pastors, yes, <laughs> and passages. Uh, that's great. Fair. So I, I don't mean to make you feel, um, feel beat up. Uh, after already feeling weary and and self-disappointed for this last season, I do want to encourage you. And so I flew through this chapter because there's a secret here for life and living. And, And actually, the answer to these stories isn't, now go out and do more. That's not the answer to these stories. If you look back and you feel like you, you've been lazy or missed it, you're self-disappointed, you haven't done enough, it's crucial to understand that the message of this chapter isn't to do more next year. The message is this. Know, know what Jesus wants you to do and do that. Very different. Know what Jesus wants you to do and do that. For, for the one who, who feels for whatever reason that they, they wasted their year, I'm sorry about that, but as you get a new beginning, as you get a new start, your mission isn't necessarily to do more. It is to find out what Jesus wants you to do this year and then do that. You need to, if you need to turn off what needs to be turned off so that you can tune in, to the one who has directions for your year. Figure out what Jesus wants and then get up, go out and do what Jesus is wanting you to do. Sadly, in the parable that we read, the second one, the one of the talents, the servant knew his master. The servant knew what the master was like and that's what makes him the evil and lazy one because he knew and, then, and didn't do it. I encourage you to to know your Jesus, know what he wants you to do, and commit to doing that in the year ahead. Don't waste another year. Okay, so some of you are weary or or disappointed because you feel like you've wasted years. Others are weary because you were waylaid by your year. 
You were waylaid by your year. For, for some of you, it's just been one of those years where your capacity has been limited by your circumstances. Years like that happen, where, where the circumstances of your life are such that your capacity just, just goes through the floor. Some, some years, you, you, just, you just can't get any traction. Uh, it could be anything from, from having a new baby or going through grief or living through a major life transition or prolonged illness for yourself or people in your life or, or mental illness or, or mental illness in people's life. There's, there's just things that can happen in life, tragedies and, and changes that, that, that re- greatly can reduce our, our capacities. And, and so some years... Uh, some, some life circumstances, we just have less capacity and be able to do less than we, we would wish. And, and maybe you come to the end of your year feeling weary, maybe self-disappointed a bit that, that we, we didn't do as much for Jesus as we, we would have wanted to. Or other people did so much more and I didn't hardly do anything and we're feeling, we're feeling just worn out but also disappointed at how little we, we did. Lots of people in the Bible have years where their circumstances limit their capacity. Uh, Joseph, Joseph as a prisoner, as a slave, he had years of, of doing a lot and then he had years where he was, he was highly limited by his circumstances. If you're approaching the end of the year and, and you're weary because of circumstances, Jesus isn't disappointed in you. He, he understands. He understands what your year has been like. He understands the challenges and the limits that you've, you've gone through. And, and he looks at you in your, your weariness and he says words to the weary. He says those whose circumstances, whose life has piled on them, and, they, and they, they're, they're so worn out by it. And this is what he says to the weary in Matthew chapter 11. Jesus says, come to me. He says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. All of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourselves for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you've had a difficult year because of circumstances, I don't want you to be carrying around false guilt or, or, just, or, or, or heaping it on yourself uh, negatively for feeling like you, you haven't done enough. The message for you, if, if this has been your year, a year like that, my message for you is this. Know what Jesus wants you to do and do that. Know what Jesus wants you to do and do that. Now, same words as before, uh, but that means Jesus knows your limits. Don't feel guilty for not being able to do as much as other people have been able to do this year. Just you be dialed in to what Jesus wants you to do today, this week, this year. For example, I, I, my, my mentor, my mentor um, had a simple prayer when he retired. Wasn't, he didn't really have anything necessarily that he had to do each day. And so he had this simple prayer, and he was something along the lines of, Father, what do you want me to do today? Give, what is your assignment for me? And as you might guess, sometimes he would be given the opportunity to tell someone about Jesus or maybe start discipling someone or maybe Jesus would say, hey, I want you to invite these people over to your house and, and show them hospitality and care and love. But other times... Jesus' assignment for him was to do nothing, to rest, to care for his wife, to cancel having people over. Sometimes less is doing what Jesus is wanting you to be doing. Maybe you, you've spent your year caring for someone who is, who is sick and, and you just didn't have the capacity and, to, to do all that you felt like maybe on the inside you should have done. 
If that was Jesus' assignment for you this year, care for that person and you did that, well done. Well done. Know what Jesus wants you to do and do that. Be it more or be it less. Be it bold or be it silent and hidden. If you've had one of those years, I hope that you're giving yourself grace and you're taking on heaven's perspective for your life. That's number two. Thirdly, thirdly, some of you might be worn out by taking on too much. You might be worn out by taking on too much. You, you've taken on more than what Jesus has asked you to do, and you are worn out. If it's your propensity to take on too much, and you look back at your life and you think, yep, I took on too much, more than Jesus asked me to take on, then I want to share with you two incredible life-impacting passages for people like that. I'm laughing because people like me. I get it. I get it. I get it. You don't have to point the finger. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay, first one is in John chapter 1. Five words, five words that can change your life. The context is John the Baptist. He is answering questions. Who are you? And his response, and he says this as clearly as possible, and he declares repeatedly, he says, I am not the Messiah. I am not the Messiah. Some of you, <laughs> us, have burned ourselves out or are close to it because this year you forgot to confess with your mouth or with your choices or with your behaviors this testimony of I am not the Messiah. I'm not the Messiah. So if you're worn out by taking on too much, the message for you, us, is know what Jesus wants you to do and do that only. Know what Jesus wants you to do and do that. You are not the Messiah. You're not supposed to do everything. Instead, you're supposed to be acutely focused on what is it that Jesus wants you to do, what does he actually want you to do, and what does he not want you to do, even if that means certain things don't go as well as they would have gone had you not been there. I am not the Messiah. And you know, Jesus didn't do everything either. Jesus didn't do everything either, which brings me to the other passage. In the context of this passage, Jesus is, he is, he's had this ministry in Capernaum, and he's been teaching and healing people, and, and, and then this is what we read in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he, Jesus, got up, went out, and made his way to a deserted place, and he was praying there. Simon and his companions went searching for him. They found him and said, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let's go on to the neighboring villages so that I may preach there too. This is why I have come. Now, there could have been a lot more Jesus did in Capernaum. He, he, there, he, there's a lot more that he could have taught people. And he could have probably done a lot better job teaching people than the other people who were going to be teaching once he, he left. He could have healed more people. People were, were coming there. But, but and people were thinking he should do more here in Capernaum. And again, this perfectly illustrates our, our point for today. What happens is Jesus gets away. He figures out what his heavenly father wants him to do, and then he does that. And that means not doing any more work in Capernaum and instead going somewhere else. Focus on what the father wants him to do, not what everybody else thinks he should do, his disciples or the people in Capernaum. Jesus also didn't meet every need. He didn't heal everyone who was sick. He, 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 only, he didn't even meet everybody on the planet when he walked the planet. He, he he, he pretty much stayed in a very small part of planet Earth while he walked. 
There's so much that he didn't do. There's so much that he could have done. I'm, I'm struck in Acts chapter 3. There is, there is, there is somebody there at the, at the temple that needs to be healed. And Peter and John, I'm going to give it away. They're going to heal it. They're going to say, silver and gold I have none. And we get it in the name of Jesus. And that, it's great. Uh, but he's been there, and, and he was there. He was 40 years old. And so he'd been there for a long time. And Jesus never healed him. And this strikes me every time because I know that Jesus was at the temple. I know he was at the temple at least three, if not four times every year. He's there and he's walking in and out of this gate and he doesn't heal this guy. Why? Well, because God had another plan for someone else to be about that healing. That healing was for a different time. And Jesus could be like, hello, God, I'm the Messiah. I could do a better job healing this person. I mean, Peter, you want Peter to heal me? He can hardly walk on water very much without sinking. I mean, come on, like, I got this one. Like, it's just, I can just, no, no. But the Father has a plan and a purpose for not only the fact that this guy is gonna be healed someday, but that it's important that it's not done by Jesus. And so it's, we can learn from that ourselves and be like, hey, sometimes we're gonna see what needs to be done and say, somebody's gotta do it, then I will do it, which might be God's pr- prompting of your life, but sometimes it's not because God actually wants somebody else who can't walk on water as good as you can to do it instead of you. Jesus did not do everything that God asked him to do. And surprise, 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 Jesus still had time to sleep, to pray, to rest, usually eat, although there's a few times where he didn't have time to eat. If you don't have time to sleep, or if you don't have time to get enough rest, or you don't have time to pray, you're probably definitely doing more than Jesus is asking you to do. Because God's list for your life and God's to-do list for your life includes rest. It includes prayer. Now, I don't say that to make anyone feel guilty. Some of you are worn out simply because you've done way more than Jesus has been asking you to do this year at the cost of your soul the cost of your inner person and and it's just exhausted on the inside your heart's exhausted fourthly some of you are worn out or self-disappointed because you've gone too long or too frequently without healthy rest without healthy rest Remember the Sabbath by keeping it holy, keeping it set apart, by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath to your family and adventure, to the Lord your God. The seventh is it's a day for your soul. For your soul. God has things for you to do, and rest is a major part of it. Now, as I said at the beginning, I have three aims for my my uh, my beginning of 2019. I want my soul to be more alive with God in the next three months in comparison to the last three months. I want to live with less anxiety and stress. And I want to live confident and confirmed. Not just confident, I can be falsely confident. I want to be confident and confirm that what I'm doing with my time and energy and at work, at home, and all of my life is exactly what Jesus wants me to be doing. If you have any aims anywhere along the lines, those lines, there's, I have three things for you to assess, uh, to assess and improve upon as we seek to live this next year less weary, less worn out, less self-disappointed. I guess they're, they're going to count as the challenges today, but, but really they're more like directions towards thriving. Thriving. Challenge number one, if this is important for you, reestablish your rhythm, your rhythms of rest, and make sure you're clear on what you do when you rest. Make sure you, you have a good working definition of what rest time looks like. 
Reestablish your rhythms of rest. Secondly, uh, reset your schedule of Bible reading and prayer. You can assess uh, how that's going. It might need a reset. Thirdly, mature your ear to hearing what Jesus wants you to be doing each day. And you're like, where do I even begin? So simple. Father, what do you want me to do today? I'm here. That, 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 that's kind of your starting point to, to begin that process. Now, I think that God's going to be asking you, Jesus is going to be asking you to do things this year. He definitely is going to be asking you to do things. He's going to put things on your heart, sometimes big things on your heart. Things are going to take your best effort, your best strength. I'm not saying that this is going to be a, a, a lazy year at all. I have no idea what Jesus' plans and purposes are for you. But hopefully over the next week or two, you're going to start to get some flavors as you're asking, God, what do you want me to do this year? What do you want me to do um, this year? What do you want me to do for you or, or whatever? And, and as those things come to your mind, you're going to be receiving some cards next week fa for our fasting week, which is in two weeks from now. And you can start putting on, there's a place on the back of these cards to write four things that you want to be fasting and praying for during your fasting week. And, and I hope, the, the ideal is that you'll be writing things that you feel like God's putting on your heart for this year. Right, you know, what is God putting on my heart? Okay, then I'm gonna be praying that God really does an amazing thing with this or that he helps me with this or that he deals with this impossible challenge or, or whatever the case might be. So you'll have that opportunity next week. Now, I, I'm, I, I'm, if you're feeling weary, and I, I hope you're encouraged, I, I am with you in, in this, this journey of trying to live the, the life that's listening to what God wants us to be doing, and doing that, and doing only that. I understand that it's a challenge, because we all have our broken areas, and sometimes it's, it's broken in the area of motivation, sometimes it's, it's being overly motivated, and, and so we're, we're working to, to tune our ears towards heaven.